Thank you guys and welcome to Virtual View in 42. We're going to be talking about hitting and how it is the most difficult thing to do in all of sports. We have a round bat with a round ball. We're supposed to hit it square. It doesn't even make sense, guys. You know, and one thing would be if it were just still in a tee, but it is not. It's being thrown from the mound. So we have a pitcher out there who's going to come in and he's going to throw a fastball away. He's going to come in and throw it inside. He could also throw it up in the zone and he could also throw it low. And one thing is to be for a straight, but it's not going to be straight. They could throw one that curves, we can throw one that sinks, one that cuts, one that appears to rise, one that dips, and they can also speed you up and at the same time slow you down. Timing is key. And the best way to explain it is by this innovative theory of effective velocity. Mr. Perry Husband came out with this great study that explains the effects of speeds against hitters and the effective speeds for pitchers as well. So let's go to the overhead view and let's look at how you do this. So now we're going to take a 90 mile per hour fastball, which is just a, just about average in the big leagues. 90 mile per hour fastball, I want to put my best swing on that ball. The contact point is going to be somewhere around here for me. It's different for every hitter, but right around here for me, it'll be a perfect contact point for a fastball right down the middle, 90 miles per hour. Now it takes about 0.4 seconds to react to that type of fastball. Now if you take that same fastball, 90 miles per hour, and move it away, I have a little bit more time. I have to wait a little bit deeper to put that A swing on that ball. So now that same pitch, the same speed, I just have to wait a little bit longer and maybe make contact right about here. You know, and that ball will be taken into left field. I have more time. So the 90 mile per hour fastball now really seems to me like 87. Now, let's take that same 90 mile per hour fastball and move it over to the inside part of the plate. Now I have to make contact out in front. I have less reaction time. I have to be quicker. I don't have time to think about it. I have to be ready. Now, the reaction time here will probably be like 0.38, equivalent to maybe a 95 mile per hour fastball inside. You know, that's the way it's going to seem to me. That's the key to understanding EV. It's understanding the effects of speed in each location and with the contact point that I want to achieve. This doesn't only work for pitches in and out. At the beginning of my career, that's one of the things I used to do. I used to focus on looking for a pitch right around here, out middle away, around, around knee high. That was the pitch I liked. I wanted that pitch. I expected the pitch. I hunted that pitch. Breaky pitch out toward left. Go! This pitch is down and it is absolutely tattooed. One of the best guys at this is Mike Trout. Obviously, he's having a great success. He's one of the best hitters in baseball, but he focuses on looking for a fastball middle away. And when he actually gets it, he's right on it. But when they flip him, a little curveball, a little slider, he can adjust to slower speed. A slider in is pretty much the same speed as a fastball away, same timing, same rhythm. He doesn't have to break stride. He just goes right into it, puts the best powerful swing on the ball, and the numbers speak for themselves. Swing and a miss, and pain is gone. But it didn't take long for pitchers to adjust. They knew that that was my nitro zone, so they started pitching me up in the zone. And I was having trouble. I had no idea how to make an adjustment because I was still looking for that fastball away lower in the zone, which was my favorite. So I had to make an adjustment, and that's when I learned effective velocity. I learned the theory, and all of a sudden now I was hunting for pitches up in the zone. One of the best guys in all of baseball doing this is David Ortiz. Change up low and away. That's a very slow timing. He's got to wait all the way. But then you see him against Price, fastball inside, and he just all over it, hits it out to right center field. Look at this one. This one is at his neck. There's no way you can go from a low away change up, you know, that's like school zone speed, to up, up in his neck, you know, from Price. It's like, you know, NASCAR Speedway. You know, there's no way you can react to those two different timings unless, unless you were hunting it. You know, he was going after his prey. And that's why David Ortiz is so exciting to watch. He's one of my favorite hitters of all time.